Hello, and welcome to New England Escapades. Today, we visited the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, Massachusetts. Here's what we found out on our adventure. Open to the public in 1903, the museum is named for its founder, Isabella Stewart Gardner, an art collector, philanthropist, and patron of the arts. Born into a wealthy family, she experienced a few personal tragedies before recuperating from the losses with her husband in Europe. After a year, she returned to Boston and began establishing herself as a fashionable, if controversial, socialite. For example, in 1912, she attended a formal performance of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, wearing a white headband with the phrase, Oh, you Red Sox. The results were reported to be near a panic. After receiving an inheritance from her father in 1891, Gardner began collecting art seriously. After purchasing pieces such as Rembrandt's self-portrait, age 23, Gardner and her husband Jack began considering the idea of a museum. While they initially considered the idea of expanding upon their existing home, Jack felt it would be a better idea to build on a new property. This new building could even contain apartments in which they could live. The Gardners were passionate about Italy, and Venice in particular. Isabella wanted the museum to have the feeling of being in a Venetian garden, and as such the Gardners collected architectural elements throughout Italy to augment the museum's design. William Sears was hired as architect, and his firm's experience with Phillips Exeter Academy in the Old South Church gave ample reason to believe he was the right person for the job. Isabella did prove to be a difficult client, however, and often requested changes be made after they had already been built. Sears often found himself in the role of a referee between Gardner and the workers. The results, however, speak for themselves. A lush garden blooms in the centerpiece courtyard of the museum year-round, and as many times as you pass it as you travel through the museum, you'll find yourself stopping again and again for a moment of serenity. And surrounding this beautiful courtyard on all sides for several floors is a collection of over 7,500 sculptures, pieces of furniture, textile, silver, and ceramics, 1,500 rare books, and 7,000 archival objects from ancient Rome, medieval Europe, Renaissance Italy, Asia, the Islamic world, and 19th century France and America. It would be folly to try to list any of it, so hopefully in the course of this video you've gotten a glimpse at a fraction of what is on display at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. However, it is what is not on display that has stirred public interest and curiosity for the past 30 years. It is unfortunate, but perhaps the most famous incident to occur at the museum was a theft in 1990. In the early morning of March 18th, two men posing as Boston police officers persuaded a night watchman to let them into the museum in response to an alleged disturbance call. While the fire alarm panel had been malfunctioning that night, which was suspicious in and of itself, no call was made to the police. The two on-duty night watchmen were subdued and handcuffed by the thieves, who then wrapped duct tape around the watchmen's eyes and mouths. Curiously, they did not ask for directions as they led the watchmen down into the basement where they were bound to a workbench and a steam pipe. After disabling or even breaking some security devices, they entered the Dutch room. They shattered the frames of Rembrandt's The Storm on the Sea of Galilee and A Lady and a Gentleman in Black, and cut them with a knife from their frames. They attempted to steal a large Rembrandt self-portrait, but were unsuccessful as it was painted on wood and could not be rolled up. They instead took another self-portrait that was about the size of a postage stamp. They also stole works by Flink and Vermeer before taking a Chinese goo, leading to a total of 13 stolen items. The thieves escaped successfully with their haul, with an estimated value of between five to six hundred million dollars. While there are many suspects, some as famous as the late Boston crime boss Whitey Bulger, there has never been enough evidence to conclusively connect any of them to the crime. The museum has left the frames of the stolen works hanging in the Dutch room as a placeholder for the missing works, and has an optimistic hope for their return. Close examination even reveals the jagged edges of canvas where the paintings were removed from their frames. There is so much to see at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum that, at some point, you will want to take a load off and perhaps get some refreshments. Café G, located on the first floor, offers a variety of fresh and mostly health-conscious bites, along with a handful of beers and wines and soft drinks. On your way out, be sure to stop by the gift shop, filled with books on the museum and its collection, reproductions, and even museum-branded gear with quips from Mrs. Gardner herself. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum is located at 25 Evans Way in Boston, Massachusetts. Discounted parking is available on levels P1 to P3 of the Simmons School of Management garage. The garage is located at 86 Avenue Louis Pasteur, a six-minute walk from the museum. It is also accessible by the MBTA Green Lines E-Train at the Museum of Fine Arts stop. Several bus routes service the stop as well. There's a lot of ways to get here and so much to see that it's a must-do in the area. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and keep on adventuring.